a very good evening. It's 9th of April 2017 and welcome to a brand new edition of News First Weekend. I'm Arun Vikimita Nayaka. Let's start off with a look at the stories making headlines this evening. Appointments presented to 1,300 new nurses. <laughs> EPF and ETF funds lost through the bond transactions should be recovered. Politicians and civil activists speak out. Billion ne kolhak paadu elati na onang. May pili bande niyoga do na sielu waga ki tanging a mudala ayakara gan na naivat EPF farm mudal da bara kalay. Onam budhi mat kine kuro peno meka visal horka makkala tiro. EPF kya ne minister ke saali. Kya me seva kya ngi aithi vasi kam valate hiri hari akona akarate ar mudala taatati yan na ho ek naasi karan na pili deni ne. Petroleum Joint Trade Unions assert that the agreement to sell the Trinkamali storage tanks to India is void. The Health Ministry says discussions to take over the Neville Fernando Teaching Hospital in Malabe will begin next week. Six national records broken at the selection trials for the National Athletics Championship. On to our stories in detail now. Gayanthika Beratna of the Sri Lanka Navy set a new Sri Lanka record in the women's 800 meters track event at the Diagama Mahinda Rajapaksa grounds today. Six new national records were set at first selection trials today. Gayanthika Beratna clocked 2 minutes and 2.55 seconds to clinch the title. Nimali Leonarachi, the previous national record holder, failed to defend her title. I'm very happy today as I was able to set a new Sri Lanka record for the 800 meters at the National Sports Festival. In 2015, Nimali and I both set new records at the National Sports Festival in Jaffna, but I faced a big challenge because they didn't consider my record as valid. So I was determined to run on a track that had the electronic timing system. Today I ran and I was successful and I'm so happy about it. I sacrificed a lot for it. In 2016, Nimali Leonarachi broke the Sri Lankan record for the women's 800 meters set by veteran athlete Dammika Menike in the 1992 Barcelona Olympics. But a record breaking run was not considered as valid due to the fact that the electronic timing system was not in place. President Maitri Palasirisen engaged in a special puja at the Mutumari Amman Kovil in Sorvila, Timulagala today. The special puja was held in fulfillment of a vow that President Maitripala Sirisena made last December seeking divine intervention to end the drought that prevailed in the recent past. A group of religious leaders including Venerable Atharulia Ratanathera and politicians were present at the occasion. The puja was organized by the Sri Lanka Mahavali Authority and Polonaro District Secretariat. Two special religious activities known as Kirikoraha Shantikarma and Ankelia Shantikarma were also performed at this occasion by the indigenous community of Polilabadda. During the ceremony, the first portion of the harvest representing all ten Mahavali zones were offered to gods while milk was boiled signifying prosperity and abundance. Various cultural items added colour to the event. 1,300 nurses were presented appointment letters today during a ceremony held under the auspices of Minister of Health, Dr. Rajita Sena Ratna. The ceremony was held at Temple Trees and was intended to develop human resources in the country's health sector. A number of representatives of the health sector participated in the event. There is a saying that goes, if it's not ruling a nation, it's serving one. Don't forget that serving includes the doctor and the nurses who assist. Nursing is considered a career in the UK. However, we don't experience the same here. When a decision was made to hand over degrees to nurses, the doctors' association was against it. This is what is called frog-in-a-well politics. The toad thinks that it's in the ocean. It swims from one side to the other and stands panting, thinking that it swam from one end of the ocean to the other. Some of our politicians and people are like these toads. This is the mentality that we broke on the 8th of January. The biggest edge we had is that the Maharajanu at the time never thought that he could lose. 
If he ever had a notion that he could lose, it could have been tougher for us. If that was the case, we would have been put behind bars during the last week to enjoy our victory. Secretary to the Minister of Health, Andhra Chavikrama, says that discussions will be held with all stakeholders within the next few weeks with regard to the taking over of the Neville Fernando Hospital in Malabe under the Ministry of Health. The Secretary made this observation following a news first inquiry. On the 7th of this month, issuing a media release, the Ministry of Higher Education and Highways informed that the government intends to take four steps with regard to the private medical university in Malabe. Though the four proposals were presented by the Minister of Higher Education, they are proposals of the government. The four proposals were formulated after extensive discussions between our ministries together with the President. The President gave me the approval for the plan and informed me on Friday. Then, last morning, he gave me the approval to present this as the government proposal. Accordingly, those proposals were published. From these proposals, it is now clear that CITEM has acted in violation of the laws of the country since its inception. In order to serve justice to all stakeholders, we presented five proposals after discussions with the GMOA, the deans of the faculties and eight panels of university lecturers. We presented five proposals to this committee. However, instead of implementing these proposals, four other proposals were presented. With this, the situation has become more confusing. <laughs> It is the government that formulates the education policy when it comes to medicine. Government cannot abolish CITEM. If we do so, we will have to stand before court on charges of contempt of court. We have submitted a set of proposals in accordance with the court decision. They say the students are not qualified, but the students are prepared to sit for any examination set by the UGC and the Medical Council. <laughs> The money to build the Neville Fernando Hospital was obtained from Bank of Ceylon without keeping any guarantee. A loan was given at a very low interest rate by the Bank of Ceylon. Now Neville Fernando is not paying that loan. This was built with a loan from a state bank. Now what they are trying to do is to allocate a certain amount of public money from the budget for the maintenance of the Neville Fernando Hospital. This is a scam. From this point onwards, money will be allocated from the budget for CITEM. Just because it is taken over by the government, it will not be integrated into the free healthcare system. This will continue as a private hospital owned by the government. An individual must pay to obtain the services of this hospital. Apart from that, public taxes will be spent on this. Not even a single person who is involved in this struggle has asked to take the Neville Fernando Hospital under the government. It is not one of the demands of our struggle. If the government wants to take it over, they can do so, and if they don't want to, then they don't have to do it. It is up to them. Everyone is asking for the closure of CITEM. Then, Rajita and them have put forward something called the standards. It is not Rajita Sena Ratna's standards or Lakshman Kirela's standards. It is not the health ministry's standards. The standards should be formulated by the medical council. Doctors cannot change policy. These doctors do not have the capacity to intervene in the medical education. But... At the end of the day, the GMOA is a trade union. Medical education comes under the purview of the Medical Council. We are attempting to resolve the dispute through talks with the Medical Council. The GMOA is a trade union and they have a separate agenda. We made an inquiry in this regard from the Sri Lanka Medical Council. Speaking in News First, President of the Medical Council, Professor Carlo Fonseca, said they will issue a statement on their stance after discussions with the Medical Council on the situation that has arisen. The Ceylon Petroleum Corporation Trade Union Collective claims that as the agreement to hand over the oil tanks in Trincomalee to Indian Oil Corporation is invalid, steps should be taken for Sipetco to acquire the premises. DJ Rajkarna, the union's convener, says that if the premises are not acquired by Sipetco, they will resort to trade union action. The Trincomalee Harbour is the world's second largest deep water harbour. The oil storage tanks built by the British in 1930 adjacent to China Bay add to the value of the harbour. The complex comprises of 102 tanks with a capacity of 12,500 cubic metres each. 99 of these tanks are currently functional while the lower complex comprises of 14 tanks and the upper complex comprises of 85 tanks. In 2003, the tanks were entrusted to the Indian Oil Corporation as per a memorandum of understanding between CPET Co and IOC. 
A document was signed in 2003 to hand over the oil storage complex to the Indian Oil Corporation, but that agreement was temporary and stated that a proper tax agreement should be introduced within six months. Therefore, IOC is remaining in China Bay in an illegal capacity. It has been decided at present to hand over 10 tanks to Sipet Co and to give the rest to India. This is a serious situation. Thus far, ships did not have permission to store oil in the China Bay terminal. Now they are building the necessary pipelines, thinking that they have the permission. Now they are trying to store the furnace oil there. This could result in the closure of Sepetko. Ranil Vikramasinghe may be thinking that this is an inheritance from his mother or father, but this is a national resource. Recently, the Sepetko Trade Union Collective filed a petition at the Supreme Court claiming that providing the China Bay oil storage complex to IOC is a violation of the fundamental rights of the citizenry. The case is due to be taken up on the 29th of June. Meanwhile, Subject Minister Chandima Virakodi says that an agreement has been reached to acquire 10 of the tanks in China Bay for Sri Lanka. He says that an agreement has been reached to develop the storage terminal for use by both countries. Our preliminary stance was that we required 15 tanks for the country. A cabinet paper was submitted on this matter. Later, Minister Ranjit Simbalapiti and I submitted another cabinet paper as the co-chairs of the cabinet subcommittee on the energy crisis. The cabinet paper was submitted along with the Prime Minister's cabinet paper and following talks, we were able to reach an agreement to allocate 10 tanks for the use of the Sri Lankan government. The cabinet paper introduced by the Prime Minister included a diplomatic agreement between the Indian and Sri Lankan governments on intergovernmental cooperation in addition to the oil tanks. As the subject minister, I am bound to execute my duties. I was not personally opposed to this. The Parliamentary Committee on Public Enterprises, or COP, had previously informed Sipetco that the oil storage terminal in China Bay Trincomalee should be acquired by Sipetco as the agreement to hand over the premises to IOC is invalid. Views were expressed today as well on the purported losses suffered by the EPF due to the bond transactions. This fund has around 2 trillion rupees and successive governments have used this money to sustain them. It was brought under the control of the central bank in order to protect it. However, now we can see that everything is unraveling because of the presidential commission. Officials are coming forward and speaking out. The presidential commission report should be released before any action is taken. If this was taken away from the central bank, by now this fund would have been destroyed. After the commission report is released, if it is revealed that the government has suffered a loss, then the government has a responsibility to ensure that they take steps to get back the money that was lost. This is money that was accumulated through the sweat of the working force. No one can touch this fund. The Mahindra Rajapaksa government also did a similar thing. They invested EPF funds in loss-making state institutions and caused massive losses to the EPF. The latest revelation is that EPF funds were used for the bond scam. Minister John Senviratna himself said that the EPF has suffered a loss of 11 billion rupees due to this. What is happening now is that the social security net for private sector employees is being used by various rogues and racketeers to make profits. An immediate investigation should be held and if the EPF has suffered an 11 billion loss, then this money should be recovered from the officials responsible for this. We cannot allow rogues and racketeers to steal the hard-earned money of private sector workers. We cannot sacrifice the lives of the working force for companies like Perpetual Treasuries and everyone else connected to the bond scam to make profits. We directly criticize the actions of the former central bank governor. Any intelligent person who reads about what happens in the Presidential Commission can see that a fraud took place. One aspect of it was the EPF funds. Why couldn't the EPF buy bonds directly? Why did they have to go through someone else? There has been a loss. That is why investigations are underway. The EPF is the people's money. Why does a state institution need to go through a private company? This is the question that we have. We have received information regarding an issue surrounding the funds of the EPF. We will not allow anyone to lay their hands on this money and waste these funds which belong to the people. We believe that once the investigations conclude, we will be able to regain this money from the people who profited through the bond scam. The court will need to reach a decision, but we can file charges.
Journalists raised questions in this regard during an event held in Colombo, which was raised by Minister of Finance Ravi Kamranayaka. Minister John Seriviratna says that 11.5 billion loss was suffered due to the EPF and ETF funds being invested. During John Seriviratna's time, the CEB lost around 3 billion rupees and we have no idea where this money went. Some people make statements as if they have no recollection of past events. This is not the time for such questions. We should ask him before responding. What we need to do is to find out if there was anything wrong. This has been a scam going on since 2008 with Ajit Nivad Cabral. They don't speak of these things, but they just rant on about bonds. We will provide a direct answer to John Seniviratna. A 15-minute power nap in between a long journey can save your life and the lives of others. Two people were killed in Koskast in Yanitambo today as a result of a motorist falling asleep at the wheel. Meanwhile, three Romanians were injured in an accident on the Dambulukurunagal main road in Galevela today. A van transporting a group of foreign tourists caught fire in the Omaragola area in Galevela on the Dambulukurunagal road today. The vehicle had veered off the road and crashed into the ceiling of a nearby shop. The van had also collided with a high-tension power cable. The van caught fire immediately afterwards and the occupants were rescued from the vehicle by a soldier who was in the vicinity. Oh. The fire brigade of the Dambulu Municipal Council doused the blaze. A CCTV camera captured footage of a collision which occurred at about 2.45 a.m. this morning on the Nitambo Candy Main Road in Kongasthenia. Police say a lorry flying from Colombo to Kandy had collided with a three-wheeler travelling in the opposite direction. Of the four people travelling in the three-wheeler, two were killed at the scene of the collision. The two other occupants were admitted to the Watapitiwala Hospital and were later transferred to the Colombo National Hospital. Hospital sources say one of the victims is in a serious condition. The deceased have been identified as 27-year-old Isurishara from Keruwalapitiya and 27-year-old Malchani Madushani from Angoda. The police say the accident occurred as the driver of the lorry had fallen asleep. The driver is currently in the custody of the Nitambo police who are conducting further investigations. Another collision was reported from Pitigala Alpitia today as a result of a motorist falling asleep at the wheel. A three-wheeler had veered off the Alpitia Palawata road via Pitigala and had crashed into a mango tree on the roadside. The driver of the three-wheeler, who sustained serious injuries, is being treated at the Alpitia hospital. The Pitigala police are conducting further investigations. News first you reporter Vajira Chasinga captured footage of the aftermath of a road accident in Kapugoda Pugoda today. The accident occurred on the Hangwella Kirindivela road this morning. A three-wheeler had collided head-on with a motorcycle, injuring the two people travelling on the motorcycle. They were admitted to the Dompe hospital. The moment the collision occurred was captured on a CCTV camera at a nearby shop. Another stage of, pro of providing housing loans under the National Housing Development Initiative by the Ministry of Housing and Construction was held yesterday. During the event, Subject Minister Sajid Premadasa presented housing loans to residents of Warapitiya in Katwana Hambantota. Funding worth 104.6 million rupees was made available to 990 families in the area. <laughs> Meanwhile, addressing an event held today, Minister Sajid Premadasa expressed these views on the joint opposition. The joint opposition is asking for power once again to create an era for the common man. However, what did this group do just a year before they lost power? They imported 257,000 metric tons of rice without any cabinet approval. The loss suffered because of it is 15.15 billion rupees. Whose money is this? It is the people's money. 
They say that they are people who love this country and therefore they can rebuild it. This is an amazing way of showing their love to the country. The minister shared these views during an event held to lay the foundation stone for a bridge being built in the Sumihirigama area in Digana. MP Harchan Harshan Rajakarna laid the foundation stone for the bridge proposed to be constructed along the Dompe Kuttivilla Road today. The Vijay Udana Bakmaha Festival was held at the Delgoda Public Grounds today under the auspices of the State Minister of Defence, Ruan Vijayavadana. The event comprised of many popular folk games and also a motorcycle exhibition by the Sri Lanka Army. Many people were involved in ensuring the success of this event. I must extend my gratitude to the Triforces for their support. The Sirsa Media Network too provided immense support to make this event a reality. The success of this Bakmaha festival is certainly due to the support we received from all stakeholders. Sri Lanka bid farewell to veteran film director Vasanto Besekara who rendered a valuable service to the Sinhala cinema. The final rites were observed at the public cemetery in Boralla. Born on the 19th of December 1939, Vasanto Besekara provided a yeoman service to Sri Lankan cinema. Following his start on the silver screen in the 70s, Vasanto went on to hold many roles including screenwriter, director and actor. Laying claim to many accolades and awards, at the recently concluded Presidential Film Awards, Vasanto Besekara was presented the Golden Lion Lifetime Achievement Award. Well, if you are squeamish about scorpions, you might want to turn away as a nest of scorpions was uncovered from the Godakedara area in Gampaha. These scorpions were found after area residents informed wildlife officials last night regarding their presence. According to area residents, they first saw the scorpions when they were agitated by vehicle emissions from a lorry that was parked in close proximity to their nest. Desi ekat itu rasan sanksi awak gunusso itu ning ibu tera gatta netta mesa tu nta hania kuen nabulu angni sa itu inga pi mesa tu. We were able to rescue around 200 scorpions. These animals are an important part of Sri Lanka's biodiversity. There are around 1,725 different types of scorpions in the world. There are around 18 of these types in Sri Lanka. There might even be a new type of scorpions among the ones that we rescued today. And in sports news this evening, Lewis Hamilton master Shanghai's changing conditions and stayed clear of squabbling rivals to win the Chinese Formula One Grand Prix in Shanghai. And with that, we wrap up tonight's edition of Weekend Prime Time News. Thank you very much for joining us. Good night.